Hello, I'm Bob Wolpert, K6XX, Engineering Program Manager. I will now discuss our KAT500 automatic antenna tuner. The CAT500, as we call it, was designed to match antennas presenting a 10 to 1 SWR to your amplifier at 600 watts. It features an integrated three position automatic antenna switch. The tuner memorizes previous successful tune settings, storing them by antenna position and frequency. While the tuner searches for a match, it bypasses your amplifier by opening its key line. It also protects your amplifier from sudden antenna damage, for example, by opening the key line when it no longer can produce a decent match. And the CAT500 works with all transceivers and amplifiers. A 10 to 1 SWR range is 5 ohms to 500 ohms. That's pretty much the limit of practicality for coax-fed antennas at 500 plus watts. The CAT500 employs an efficient L network for impedance matching, which is auto-reversing, depending on whether you're matching above 50 ohms or below 50 ohms. The L network components are top quality. The capacitors are premium RF current rated designs that are supremely rugged and reliable. The three position automatic antenna switch may be customized via our free CAT500 utility program to suit your station. For example, if your station has an external antenna switch for 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, plus another for 30, 17, and 12, and your 6 meter antenna comes in separately, you could set up your CAT500 so that the antenna 1 position connects the 80 through 10 meter antennas, antenna 2 connects the work antennas, and antenna 3 is dedicated for 6 meters. Or you could have multiband antennas on each jack, or anything in between. You may configure it optimally for your station. If you allow multiple antenna positions for a given band, the tuner is smart enough to store separate tune solutions for the same frequency segment on each individual antenna port. The CAT500 offers three and a half operating modes. The first mode, fully automatic, is intended for unattended remote stations. The tuner operates autonomously. It recalls the tune settings stored in memory, but if the settings are missing, or if the antenna no longer matches those settings, a new tune cycle will begin automatically. This has the side effect of occasional unexpected retunes while you operate. During this tune cycle, you're operating at reduced power and retunes using single sideband mode take longer than those with full carrier modes. The standard operating mode for the CAT500 is labeled MAN. Unexpected tunes do not occur in MAN mode. You train the tuner on your preferred operating frequencies and as you return to them the tuner quickly recalls them from memory. Bypass mode turns the CAT500 into a three position automatic antenna switch bypassing the ladder network. Now, what's that half mode? Well, when the tuner is powered off, the input is connected to the antenna 1 position. Each band is broken up into multiple band segments. The tuner stores successful tune solutions by antenna position and band segment. On 80 meters, for instance, you have a very different impedance at 3500 than you do at 3800. Since the CAT500 knows your transmit frequency and which antenna port you've selected, it recalls the correct match automatically. For this to work correctly, you must train your tuner by performing an automatic tune in each segment where you operate. Now the tuner is trained, and the next time you return to that frequency or segment, it provides the right match. Protection is another important feature of an automatic tuner. During tune cycles, a relay opens, interrupting the amplifier key line and placing the amplifier into its pass-through or receive mode. You don't want to be transmitted at high power until a bank of switching relays, after all. The CAT500 also has a programmable maximum SWR threshold where if the tuner cannot find an equal or better match, it will open the key line to protect the amplifier. And the tuner protects itself by detecting if the antenna mismatch is too high for the output power. The CAT500 was designed to be operated remotely. Each operating condition and parameter is accessible via the serial port. Elecraft offers free remote control software, so you may operate your tuner via that serial port from anywhere. The software is available from the Elecraft website. The CAT500 has several other interesting features. In a multiple transmitter station, it will not start a false retune if it detects reverse power from a different transmitter. For example, if you're at field day operating on 20 meters and another nearby station is transmitting on 40 meters, some power, sometimes several watts of power, will travel up your coax and appear as reflected power on your SWR bridge. 
Many other automatic tuners will see this reverse power and switch into retune mode. On your next transmission, instead of seeing a matched antenna, your transmitter instead is met with a tuner frantically attempting to get back to where it started from. This drops your output considerably and is extremely annoying to say the least. The Cat 500 doesn't make this mistake. In the standard man mode, tunes don't begin until you manually press the tune button. If you're using the full auto mode, Cat 500 logic ignores reflected power readings when they are higher than forward power, preventing this problem. AH4 transmitter control, popular with many mobile radios and useful for station automation purposes, is supported with a rear panel jack. Cat 500 runs from a standard 12 volt supply and generally uses less than one amp. It varies a little bit depending on how many relays are selected. The internal antenna switch is programmable via Cat 500 utility, which is available free from the Elkcraft website. You may lock out unused positions or limit any band to one, two, or all three positions. The Cat 500 was designed to work with the KPA 500, but is universally applicable working with all transceivers and amplifiers. It has the same outline as the KPA 500 and K3 and is only an inch and a half high. The case is made of steel and four metal standoffs that reach from the top to the bottom cover are located precisely where the KPA 500 feet are located, allowing the much heavier KPA 500 amplifier to sit on top of the tuner and hold it in place. This is especially useful when you have three or four RG8 size coax cables hooked to the tuner. If I didn't say it clearly before, the CAT500 works with all amateur HF amplifiers. What we call basic mode relies on the internal frequency counter to save and recall tune settings into the correct band segment. Basic mode requires no data connection to the driving transceiver at all. The frequency counter runs all the time. When it detects that your transmit frequency has changed, it signals the tuner to select new inductors and capacitors as appropriate. This takes a short amount of time to implement, but only on your first transmission in a new segment. Let's look at the CAT500 operating in basic mode so you get a feel for the amount of time this takes. For example, here we are at the bottom of 40. Everything's working fine. We uh, QSY to the high in the phone band, and the tuner, the amplifier doesn't have to switch, but the tuner has to find new settings and so there is a slight delay. While that wasn't very long, if you implement enhanced mode and inform the tuner that you've QSY'd before you transmit, there's no delay at all. Different manufacturers use different frequency reporting techniques. The CAT500 supports data from Elecraft K3, K3S, and K4 via the AUX bus pin on the AUX connector. Flex and Kenwood radios output serial frequency data. Yesu provides 4-bit BCD data. Pre-wired cables supporting many radios are available from Elkcraft, or you may construct your own. So we loaded the CAT500 utility, the serial port menu, we select the proper serial port. This happens to be COM9, and we now find that it is talking with the computer. We can upload firmware here, or we can see what the tuner is doing. You know, we can change the antenna remotely. You can see that two capacitors and no inductor is called. So this antenna is fairly close to resonance. It doesn't need much tune to operate. We can also edit our configuration or display our fault table. If we want to uh, start over with a new QTH. For example, we're operating at field day. We don't want our home antenna settings to be recalled, so uh, we back up our configuration before we leave for field day. Then we erase the antenna tuner memories. On field day, we retrain the tuner for those antennas. It can't match an open load. That's a good thing too. Here's how we get the K3 to communicate with the CAT500 so that it tracks in band segments instead of just by band. 
go into the config menu, tune to the cat 3 menu, hit the number 1 key, which B set or AB, tap that, it says cat 500, no, tap it again, you want it to say Y for yes. So now the cat 500 is tracking the K3 in enhanced mode. So for example, if we're at the bottom of 80 meters, and we go up to the sideband frequency, you hear the CAT500 switch. That wasn't a band switch, that was a band segment switch. The tuner values changed, but the band did not. And we can transmit immediately at full power. I hope you found this description useful. If you have any questions, tune into our live stream or contact Elecraft at www.elecraft.com or email us at support at or via telephone 831 763 4211.